Hello everybody, and today we're going to talk about the Necro Monolith for 8th edition. I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is go over the two weaknesses this has. You may be aware of the one, but I'm going to just go over the second one just in case you don't really realise what it is. Okay, number one, as you already know, is in the index itself, is any troop choices you got in the portal or in the tomb world, whatever it's called. If you kill this and you haven't got a night sight for another monolith, the, whoever's inside the tomb world just dies outright. So you don't have to, you don't even get to bring it on the board if it blows up. So that's a big nerf there, because this was quite cool. It can no longer suck people across the board and bring them out, which was awesome. Alright, and another major weakness it has, which you might not be aware, is when it deep strikes in at the end you move my face, you can't bring a troop choice or anything through it, or any units through it, until the next turn. But that's not the weakness. The weakness is, the, the deep strike has to be 12 inches away from your opponent. And you may not think that's a major weakness, but let me just show you now, okay? Let's bring it out. I set the board to that weird square one with a circle in the middle. Because if you're unlucky and you get this deployment zone. Okay, I put the objectives random. So let's say then you want this in reserves, you want to deep strike it, and then turn two, you want to assault with inch guard or something. All right, let's say you got to turn one, right? This is your deployment zone, and your opponent's over there. Let's just say now, I'll say that's your deployment zone, could be easy for me to show you. That's your deployment zone. Let's just say I have all the six and C's initiative. Let me show you what my first turn will be now, okay? Hey, this is my turn one, okay? You can do this with any army, you don't need Necrons to do this. So if you're fighting against Necrons, use more or less. Do this, right? What I've done for number one, I deep strike in some things at the end of my turn, because I stole the initiative. Okay, one unit of death marks there. They're not 12 inches from the edge of the board, right? But the model is so big, it can't fit there. So there's one unit there. I set my rates over to assault whoever's in your in your deployment area. I don't even care if they die. And I also deep straight another unit of death marks there. Okay, just far enough from the deployment area. And they're just far enough from the edge of the board to stop the model lift. So we've been 12 inches, so you can't deploy in those two areas. So what have I effectively, effectively done, turn one? I have stopped you bringing this in anywhere. My deployment day will have troop choices and stuff, so we need to fit in there. You cannot put this anywhere on the board on your turn one. Okay? So you are now stuck with two choices. You got all these points in the monolith, plus wherever you go inside it. So if you've got a unit of lynch guard, let's say it's a 10, you maybe got a HQ choice to turn after. That is extremely expensive, and you can't bring it out. And if I'm very lucky, right, what I also would try to do, it all depends on how you deploy. I'll try and squeeze these guys in in the corner. So depending on how you would deploy, if you left a little gap in the end of your deployment area, I would try and squeeze those in. So by doing that, you cannot actually put that in your deployment area either, because I would destroy it. I would own the whole board. Okay, so that's turn one. Just pretend they didn't get this. Pretend you just squeezed them in. You couldn't. I couldn't get them in. So your two choices now, right, are this. You either put this guy... Move your, move your army to get him in, which is a waste of points because you've paid all our points for the transport. Or you can say, oh well, it's not that big a deal. Next turn, I'll shoot you off, whatever, and try and get you. Okay, but that is not what, that is another part of your weakness there because you all of a sudden you're starting to think, oh, I gotta get rid of these guys to be my monolith in. You're not thinking, I need to get this objective, I need to get him off this, I need to win. So, turn one, I've already beaten you because you were thinking, I gotta do this to get my monolith on the board. So that, that just cost you the game there. And turn two, right? I would send these two blades, and I would dump them in your deployment area. Like so. I don't care if you kill my death marks or whatever. I would have scarabs, I would have stuff like that to stop you deep striking in. That would be turn two gone. Whoever you killed, I would fill in the gap with more deep striking units. So that is the major, major weakness of the monolith there. It's the 12 inch deep strike. It's so easy to stop. And another part is, if you deep strike in, you still have to wait another turn to bring units in. So if you're lucky enough to bring, turn three, right, if you're lucky enough to bring them in, and bring in your guys, you still got to wait until turn four to actually do any damage. And by then, hopefully, my destroyers, my head destroyers, will have wiped out almost the entire army. So don't forget, I have like a 2,000 point list, and you've got almost half your points in one unit on the board. So it's basically two points, two to one, almost. So can your army survive all my shooting for three turns? And if I do enough damage, there's no way in hell you get me off the board. So you would not be able to bring this in. 
And I believe in 8th edition, it's still not on the board on turn 3, I think. Um, it just automatically dies. Maybe turn 4, but I'm pretty sure it's turn 3. So this is not on the board by turn, at the end of turn 3. It's dead, it's all W in it. Okay, so that's, the, that's what cost you the game, because you're like, Oh crap, I gotta get some board, I gotta get some board, I'm gonna lose all my units, I'm gonna use all my HQ, and give Warlock kill up. Boom. Instant, lo instant loss. Okay, now I've gone over the weakness of this, I'll show you how to get over the weakness of this and show how to use it effectively. Okay, we just set up the board again and I will get back to you. Okay, the best way to use Monolith now, if you want to use it for deep striking, okay, is use this guy. Okay, this deceiver. He's a character now, okay, so you don't go away by him getting wiped out on this turn one. And what I'd recommend if you do take a deceiver, depending on what army you're going up against, if you know beforehand, or even if you don't, is take this guy, the Canoptic Spider. I think it's, yeah, Canoptic Spider. It's Canoptic Spider with a Fabric Creator Claw. The most important part is the Gloom Prism. Okay, so you get T3 units. So let's just say now you got that, you can go boom, and I will get two. That's all I want. But don't forget, if you only get a one, command point, it's worth the command point. Obviously, you can still get a 1-1, one, one, but you know, that's just a chance to take. And then what you want to do is put this where you can do damage. Because then turn 1, you can be anywhere within 12 inches of your opponent. But you can also bring troops and wherever you want through this. So you can move them straight up the board. So I, I personally would just check him on this objective here. And just leave him there all, all game. Like there. It's too big for the opponent to actually get close enough to get objectives. That's mine. I check this guy here. I would. So I got Psychic Defense, I get um, Living Metal plus D3 Wounds every turn. And let's see if I would leave, say I'll put him like there. I say like halfway so you can't shoot him, so I get more of the movement. I won't put him this side because if you just wipe me out you come and attack, so you have to come around. But that's what I would do, right? So number one I would do that, instantly to see the combo with, with Anti-Psychic Defense because it's actually quite good in 8th edition. That's how I would use it. Then you're free to bring your lynch guard or whatever you want okay you can bring this out within range and so on okay that's the way to get over that weakness and there's nothing i can do to stop you because that happens before my movement phase it's doing deployment so if you do plan to bring the monolith in for deep strikes or whatever they call it these days bring the deceiver all right because 200 points extra to deep strike here guaranteed is well worth it Depending on how many models you got in these, you need to bring two more lifts. If they're both in deep strike, they're dead. You can't do anything. So against a competent opponent, the deep strike will go against you. If you're fighting like casual players, people who don't really play prop, you know, people who don't really go out to murder you, slow armies, it would be fine to deep strike it. That's my advice to go over that weakness. Okay, and let's go over another combo that you can use with this. A good combo is have just this game reserves because you know we have to take two HQs. I mean, if you do a detachment or whatever you use, have this. Oop. Oh, don't break! Oof. One of the advantages of gluing the model. <laughs> well, over glue it. Put the spider behind the guy, and then you got this guy on your turn one. If you get first turn or second turn, it doesn't really matter because the combo will work either way. Bring him out for the thing. Get as close as you can to the enemy, like that. And then you go, I'm teleporting this guy. We'll lynch guard around the field anyway. And that way, your lynch guard is safe from any deep strikes that have been blocked. So, this is the two HQs you have to bring anyway. You won't have a crypt tech any, unless you want to pay the extra points for it. But that way, you can bring in the lynch guard. Another major advantage of doing it like this, okay, the two HQ choices, is if you get stuck in combat, with something that you just can't take out, or something really nasty. Yeah, let's move this back a bit because it's a bit close. I keep forgetting how big the model is. Right, let's say you're charging these guys, and just pretend they're awesome in combat. They're just getting, they're just kicking your ass for some reason. You're just getting ones and twos and stuff. Okay, so you're charging these death marks. Just pretend they're terminators or whatever you want. You hit them in combat like so. Ah, oh, you stupid guy falling over. So just pretend the other three have been run shields, you know, those damn space marine lynch gods, whatever they call them. Right, you can come up with them. At the end of your turn, at the beginning of your turn, right, uh, next turn, let's say you lost me casualties, 
You can use this guy's power again and teleport the whole unit out of combat. Like so. You may not think that's very good, but it's one of the strongest combos mech would have. Okay, because by doing this, right, not only are you getting out of the assault, I just yeah, I'm kicking your butt, you're also able to shoot everything you want into these. Okay, so you can kill like an extra one or two in the shooting phase. And then you can be an empty way if you want when you run away, so you can actually just charge back in. And by doing this, right, you get in first turn, every turn. And if you and if things aren't going too well for your opponent, he might even be tempted to use two command points. Which is another really good way of whittling him, whittling him down. The goal is get him, get him to give it to the command points before the D3 tile objectives pop up. Because you don't want that. So that's a good way to use a uh, monolith. Another good way I like to use a monolith is... Like I just showed you, just check an objective like this. And it's so big you can't get near it to claim it. That's my objective. And it's got so many wounds. And if it's backed up by a, a spider with anti-psychic defense, there's nothing you can do to stop me. You have to put a lot of firepower into that to kill it. Okay, so... Objective grabber on turn 1 for the deployment of the deceiver. And I think you got something nasty to come over the thing and just do some damage as well. That's why I normally take warriors with us. I have to bring out the warriors, wrap it around, and just send them up to go for the objective. Like I showed in the other video, if you use all kind of diviner and then you blob the warriors, they're pretty much impossible to kill. So you get a 12-inch movement on turn 1, and then you get a 5-inch movement to get to shoot something, and even assault if you want. But it's up to you how you want to. You obviously got some plans how to use this. But I personally rather the warrior combo because I don't think Lynch Guard are any good. I don't. If they're just so slow and there's enough damage and they're too expensive, I personally would rather bring a unit of race and just run up the board anyway. So I would use the warrior combo and then go for points and one of the wraiths and the other stuff to the damage. But a good, don't forget, a good point is the spider. You get anti-psychic defense, you can't get shot because you're hiding behind the monolith because it's so big. So that's really good because these things get first blood really easily. So that is my tactics, tactics video on 8th edition's monolith. Um, let me know in the comments below if you agree with me or if you think I missed anything. Or anything I wish you'd try, like any of your secret combos. Just let me know below. And thank you all for watching and I'll catch you again in the next video.